26. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said. Go to chapter 15. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Chapter 15. Bless you, Lord. And look at verse 7. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Amen? Now, now, oh, let me go to verse uh, 26 again of chapter uh, 15. Oh, I told you 15, huh? Oh, sorry. I was reading chapter 16. <laughs> All right, verse, verse 15, verse 26, and it says, When the Comforter is come, I will send him unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from out of the Father, and, uh, and he shall testify of me. That's a good lesson for you and I. Anybody comes to your door and they're talking any other gospel other than the gospel and, and, and any other spirit, that test, that's talking about anything else other than Christ, that spirit is not of Christ because the Holy Spirit testifies about Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He testifies about Jesus. Amen? And that's what we're supposed to be doing, being led by the Holy Spirit. And all of you also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning, speaking to the disciples. Look at verse 7 of chapter 16. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, let's read on. And it says, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment yes. of sin because they believe on me. Because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye, all of you, see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will glorify me. The Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus. Amen. He will glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, I have said that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Amen. Go to Acts chapter 1, please. Acts chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. We'll go to John uh, 20, 22. <laughs> John 20, 22. Let me show you something. John? John 20, 22. <clears throat> Verse 21 says, And then said, said Jesus to them, Again, peace be unto you, and my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye, or all of you, the Holy Ghost. They are remit, uh, uh, whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye, or all of you, retain, they are retained. But what I want you to look at verse 22, it says, He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. And if you follow the scriptures, nothing happened at that moment. Nothing happened. Okay? How do I know that? Well, when you read chapter 2 of Acts, you'll see. But right now, I want you to go to chapter 1. Chapter 1. Hallelujah. Chapter 1 of, of Acts, and it says, starting with verse 4, it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the Promise. Remember that word, wait for the promise of the Father, which he says, all of you shall, uh, you have heard of me. 
He goes, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Amen? Amen. So there is a difference between being baptized in the Holy Ghost and being baptized in water, okay? And we're going to see it as we read all the scriptures. Uh, verse 5 says, again, it says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has, has put on his own power. But all of you, ye, all of you, shall receive power... All of you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Do we need power today? Yes. yes. Is it very evident that we need power today? Yes. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. You as a child of God, you as a believer, me as a believer, we need the power of the Holy Ghost in the day that we are living in 2023. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. If you think that you don't need the power of the Holy Ghost because you got your fire insurance and I'm born again, it's all good, praise God, hallelujah, you are kidding yourself because Jesus felt it was very needful that we be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Now what I want you to see here is that there are, uh, in all four Gospels, Jesus, it lets you and I know that Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Would you write this down? Matthew 3, 11. You're taking notes. You should take notes. Matthew 3, 11. Amen. Mark 1, 8. Luke 3, 16. And John 1, 33. All four of them testify that Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Now, the next question has to be then, is who is this promise for? Who is this promise for? Amen? I want you to go right now and go to uh, Acts chapter uh, 2. Acts chapter 2, amen, verse 38 and 39. Who is this baptism, this promise for? It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission, the forgiveness of sins, and ye, all of you, shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, unto your children, and to all that are far off, that's you and me, the Gentiles. How many, what's the word all mean? Oh. It means all. It means all. All the Gentiles are to be that are believers are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jew and Gentiles are to be filled with the Holy Spirit and with this wonderful evidence of speaking in Amen. tongues. Amen? Hallelujah. I didn't make this up. I'm reading my Bible. I'm reading my Bible. So it says, it's for your children, speaking of the Jews, amen, for you, for your children, and to all that are far off, again, that's the Gentiles, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Has God called you? Yes. Has God called you? Yes. Then if He called you, then this promise is for you. That's right. It's for you. The promise is for you, and it's for me. Jesus says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. And the reason the gates of hell will not prevail against his church is because his people are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Again, we need the baptism, we need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let me go back because I want you to see. Go we'll look at verse 33 a second. That Jesus again is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. It says, therefore, chapter 2, verse 33, therefore, or for that reason, being at the right hand of God, speaking of Christ, uh, 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 the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has set forth this which ye now see and hear. Let's see what they shall, uh, now see and hear. Look at verse 1 uh, to 4 of chapter 2. Verse 1 to 4 of chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place 
in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like fire, and he goes, and it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. They spoke as the Spirit gave the utterance. They spoke as the Spirit gave the utterance. Amen? Amen. It's very important that you and I understand that the Holy Spirit will inspire you to bring forth those tongues, but you got to open your mouth. It doesn't work like this, with your mouth shut. You gotta open your mouth. If you need to start off with just praise and all that, you gotta open your mouth and let it rip because it's God's desire to baptize you, fill you with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. I was listening to this one uh, precious brother, man, and he, um, uh, from the Baptist, uh, Denomination, and uh, I happened to run into him. You know, not run into him, but you know, on YouTube. And I was looking up something else on on YouTube for some other teaching I was looking for. But anyhow, and this is some uh, about uh, two years ago I saw this. And uh, so he he takes his Bible. He talks very animal, very animal when he talks. He goes, "Listen to you. Listen to me." He goes, "I'm Baptist. You know, whatever denomination you be. I'm Baptist, but he happened to be Baptist. I'm Baptist." And my my my, congreg my choir is Baptist. My congregation is Baptist. We're Baptist, right? And he goes, but listen to me carefully, because he's a lover of the word. He says, listen to me carefully. If my Baptist background contradicts this book, I will stick with the book every time. Yeah. And he goes, nowhere, nowhere in this Bible does it say that the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't for today. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is for today. And if you say it's not for today, you're making that up because the Bible doesn't verify what you're saying. Not you guys, but you know. But it blessed me the way, but the way he, he brought it. And I'm re re uh, realizing that when someone fought against it for years and they get filled for they're the, one of the best teachers on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. So are you still with me? Yes. All right, cool. Now, now watch this. All right, so on the day of Pentecost, it goes, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen? So they spoke as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Amen? Now I want you to see here, uh, go to chapter, uh, let's go to chapter 8 of Acts. Chapter 8 of Acts. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Here's funny how we are. Sometimes we can have five, six proofs, and we say, well, give me another one. Like, that's not enough. Are you kidding me? It's like people that say, well, no, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be playing music in church and, and, and doing those things in church. I said, we got 150 songs of music, and you're telling me we're not supposed to do that in church? What more proof do you need? 150. God, wait. All right, now watch this. So uh, Acts chapter 8, amen. Philip is preaching the message of the kingdom of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Starting with verse 12, he goes, and when, they, and when they believed Philip's preaching with the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. That's in water. They were baptized in water. Okay, very important. It goes, and Simon, who was a sorcerer, who believed also, amen, and was baptized also, he continued with Philip and, uh, and uh, wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs that were, were done. Now, when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might <laughs> receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was, at, he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. In other words, they were only water baptized. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Do you see that? 
Yes or no? Are you, are you still in the room? Okay. I really am asking you a question. So do you see that? Yes. Amen. So, so they came down. To, this is a separate experience from their born again experience. Amen. So they came down and they laid hands on them because that's one of the ways you receive the Holy Ghost. They laid hands on them. Amen. And the Bible says they received the Holy Ghost. And then, uh, again, that Simon looking at them, that ex-saucer, he's looking at them. He got tempted to ask them or offer them money for this gift. And Peter, again, by the Holy Ghost, was very upset. He says, may you and your money perish, thinking that you're going to ask, you know, that you're going to receive a gift like that. He goes by, by money and stuff like that. Now watch. I want to show you something. So he said he wanted the gift so that he could lay hands on anyone so that they could receive the Holy Ghost. Now... What did he see? What did he see that tempted him to say that? See, he saw something. He saw some anybody who gets filled with the Holy Ghost, anybody who gets filled with the Holy Ghost, there's an evidence. Something happens. And one of the things that happens that they hear constantly is the tongues begin to come out. The moment you're filled, out your mouth. <laughs> the moment you're filled. Now listen to me. The Bible says, out of the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It, is that true? Yes. Whatever your heart is full of, it'll come out of your mouth. That's right. So if my heart is full of the Holy Ghost, it's going to come out of my mouth. He gives us this beautiful prayer language. Let me share something with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, all right. And he's talking about the subject is love. But when he talks about men, all right, that's, that's a language in the spirit, tongues, amen. That's an earthly language. In other words, the Holy Spirit all of a sudden now gives you the ability to speak a message in tongues, amen. But it's not a, me it's not a tongue that you've ever known. You, were, you didn't learn it or anything. It's supernatural by the Holy Ghost. Let me give you an example of that. When I was back east, one day I was singing, they were singing the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And all of a sudden, I began to just sing it in tongues. I'm just singing in tongues, okay? And I was enjoying myself and everything. And, and, and uh, so, I, but I was going with the melody of Great is Thy Faithfulness. But I'm singing in tongues. So then I get home that, that afternoon and I get a phone call. And one of the ladies says to me, hey, Pastor Watt, I want to thank you for singing that, that hymn in Greek. My daughter loved it. She lives in Greece, and she loved it. She sang along with me. I said, when did I do that? <laughs> you see that? That was an earthly tongue, an earthly tongue that another earthly understood. But it was a tongue that I didn't know, but the Holy Spirit empowered me to do that. That's an earthly tongue. Then the Bible says that there's angelic tongue. The angelic tongue, amen, is a tongue that must be interpreted. It must be be interpreted. So though I talk in tongues of men, earthly, or angels, heavenly, amen? So one is man to man, the other one is God, God to man, and the third one is the unknown tongues, and that's the one that I'm really referring to right now, today, the unknown tongue. The unknown tongues is that tongue for edification that builds you up as a Christian, as a child of God. How many know it's kind of cool to have a, a gift that God gives you that on purpose you can build yourself up. Come on. How many know that you need to be built up on a daily basis? Yes. How many sometimes feel you, you walk around sometimes bummed out? Yes. One way to killing that is to focus your eyes on Jesus and begin to pray that prayer like edifying yourself, building yourself up. And the Bible says in Jude verse 20 in your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. And it's all oh, that means something else. No, it means tongues. Come on. It means tongues. In Corinthians, it says that we are to pray in all manner of prayer in the Spirit. That means tongues. Yes. You can try to make it anything else you want, but yes. it means tongues. Come Amen. Come on. Are you still with me? Yes. I'm trying to convince you here and hopefully build up your faith, too. <laughs> all right. Now, watch this. Go to chapter 9 of Acts. Chapter 9 of Acts. All right, in chapter 9 of Acts, looking at verse uh, 17, Ananias is sent by the Lord Jesus Christ to lay hands on Paul 
because uh, Paul, again, was chosen by God, amen, for the ministry that he was chosen to do for us Gentiles and all that. But at first he was afraid because Paul was causing a whole lot of trouble, amen, for the Christians. But God had called him, met him in the road to Damascus, knocked him down. How I many know if God knocks you down, you better like listen to what he got to say next. Yeah. Amen? So watch this. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee on the way that thou comest, has sent me that thou mightest receive the, thy sight and be filled, be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received his sight, uh, he received the sight wherewith, and he goes and arose and was baptized with water. He laid hands on him, the scales fell off, he received the Holy Ghost, but then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden he was water baptized. You'll see them continually together. Go to chapter 10 of Acts. Chapter 10 of Acts, starting with verse 44. Hallelujah. All right? And it says, while Peter yet spake, he goes, these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, all right, because that all the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. The Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will pray in tongues. Yes. Come on. Amen. God wanted a supernatural church. He wanted a church full of His Spirit. That's what He wanted. Yes. We need the Holy Ghost. Yes. Make no mistake about it. We need the Holy Ghost. Is Rob still here? Is Rob here or is he outside? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Rob. Oh, yes. Rob. I didn't see him. Sorry. Rob and, and Dan, will you both come up here, please? As they come up here, let me tell you a couple things that will stop you from receiving the baptism in the Holy Ghost. One of the things that will stop you from receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost is unbelief. Unbelief will stop you from receiving. Because it is God's will to give you the Holy Spirit with power. He wants to baptize you. It is His will. You don't have to pray about it. It's will of God or not, it's biblical. It is His will. Acts chapter, I mean Luke chapter 11 says to you and I that it is the Father's will, uh, that the Father wants to give you the Holy Ghost. He says, but you got to ask. You got to ask. Amen? Amen? Now, and the other one is, uh, I don't find it necessary. So unbelief is one, I don't find it necessary. Again, I got my fire insurance in, I'm born again, what do I need the Holy Ghost for? You need the Holy Ghost to live a powerful Christian life the way God wants it. Amen. Yes. You need the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He goes, someone in your family might have said, well, you know what? I don't really need, uh, um, oh, excuse me. Somebody in my family might have said, you know what? It's not for today. You see? Or a pastor that you love said that to you at one time. Or a grandpa or a grandma or, or a brother or somebody that you love said that to you and they said that it's not for today. So now in your heart you want to be loyal to that error. Did you hear me? You're going to be loyal to that error, but you want. But the Bible tells me I'm supposed to be loyal to Christ. Yeah. It's to Christ I'm supposed to be loyal. So if the Bible tells me that this is for me today, then I'm supposed to do what the Bible tells me, yeah. not what some human That's being right. told me. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah. All right. The other one is logical thinking. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. Right. Amen. It's supernatural. It has nothing to do with your logic. It has everything to do with God. Amen. The other one is pride. I might sound stupid. Well, guess what, guys? I mean, you say stuff even now that might sound stupid. <laughs> All right, I'll leave that alone. All right, so now the other one is ignorance. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know there was such a thing that we can get baptized in the Holy Ghost now. All right, and the and the uh, and the, the other two, the other two is anxiety. You have a hard time receiving when you're anxious. You'll have a hard time receiving because you're just too anxious. It's good for you just to relax. And receive. Amen. And the last one is fear. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. You know, I'm afraid that I, 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 I don't, I'm afraid I might not do it right. I'm afraid. You know, 
fear. How many know God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but Come a power of love and a sound mind? Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And he was talking to spirit-filled people. All right? All right, now I want you to, to share how you receive. All right, what you say? So I had been wanting to receive this beautiful prayer language for years and years, um, but it just never happened for me. We were on a, a Wednesday night here, Pastor Juan, um, Bible study talking about the Holy Spirit. Um, nothing happened that night for me. I went home praying about it. I got home. I got down on my knees at the bed and started to pray. And after a while, I have no idea how long it took, but it just opened up like a floodgate. And the language started coming out to the point that it actually startled me. I didn't really even, you know, I didn't have a clue what I was saying or what was going on. But it was the most wonderful, overwhelming, hot, just incredible experience, right? Mm -hmm. And what I realized that for all these years, um, there were so many things, and he's touched on some that were, were stopping that flow for me. One, when I did go to church, uh, wasn't very often growing up, it was an assembly of God, and there were a handful of folks that spoke, um, it, you know, in tongues, but it was those very mature or faithful Christians, so I thought this wasn't for me, so that's how it started out. Um, second thing was, is he made the point, I, I felt stupid, I felt silly doing that in front of folks, so I, I fought that, it was awesome in the back of my head. Um, third thing is I have a financial background, and, and so numbers. I know numbers. I can understand numbers. I can make sense of them. This, no understanding to it whatsoever. <laughs> Couldn't figure it out. Why can some do it and some can't? And finally, um, you know, I was still messing up sometimes daily, and I didn't feel worthy of it. And that was one of the really biggest things that really held me back. So my hope and prayer today is anyone who has not receive this beautiful wow. prayer language. Whatever's in your head, get it out and, and just receive it.
God. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues. And then Peter said, Can any man forbid water from these that they should be that they should not be baptized? Amen. Which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Let me give you a little lesson real quick here in two minutes. Why did the Holy Spirit fell on them first before they were even water baptized? Huh? They weren't going to allow them to be water baptized. All right. You got that right. <laughs> See, one of the reasons is because they were Jews. And the Jews not allowed, were not allowed into a Gentile's home. Right. But Peter was sent there by the, by the trance that he had, the, the vision that he had and everything, the Lord. So he goes there in obedience. Amen. But the Lord needed to prove to Peter and the rest of the uh, Jewish believers that were with him that God had accepted the Gentiles. So what he did was he reversed it and he baptized them first in the Holy Ghost. So that Peter and the rest of the guys could know I've accepted the Gentiles. Yeah. I've accepted them. And then they said, well then, uh, you know, then Peter said, well let's baptize them in water. But they're accepted by God. And the next chapter says to you and I that Peter now he's with the, with the rest of the Jewish elders and the leaders and stuff like that of, of the church. And, and they were upset because they said he entered into a Gentile's home. But he said, listen, listen, check out what happened. He goes, I was sent there by the Lord, and when I went there and all that, they received, listen to the words, the same Holy Spirit that we received. Not a different one. To, today, you're going to receive the same Holy Spirit that they received. Come on. It's the same one. It's not a different one. It's not a worn down Holy Spirit. It's the same powerful Holy Spirit. It's the same one. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we already did the repentance, because this was in here too. And we already did the repentance. So you're ready. You're ready to receive today. Are you ready? Yeah, come on. Amen. Amen. 